So, we're going to remove the keyboard bezel. And this is probably the hardest part of this whole process. You have to follow the fate and the right tool. I use a plastic uh, knife. Now, if you're lucky and you maybe ordered a replacement part from Dell, you may get the plastic pry, uh, pry removal tool from Dell, but it's very unlikely. So, this is the next best thing. Now, be very uh, careful in how I do this. This is probably the best way of getting it off. You want to work as close as you can to this corner. I'm going to simply get this, uh, this knife in and under, underneath here. And then I'm just going to get it deep enough so that I can kind of get the corner off. And if you, you saw how easy it was to do it that way. If you try to go along this edge, uh, it's going to be a disaster. So try to work the, work the corner. And then with your finger, you should just be able to kind of pull it off. Okay? It's actually a really well-designed product. Just, then just kind of with your fingers, work off the, the bezel down to the lower corner. Now just be patient with this. Don't, don't pry too hard. It'll come off. But like I said, this is the most delicate pro part of the process. Just kind of work inch by inch. Okay, these corners are the hardest. Okay, and you can see why there are these little tabs that hook. Well, probably done in SolidWorks. So, all right. So. Now that we got this exposed, there are five screws you got to take out at the bottom of the keyboard. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? So all five of those have to come out. Let's get those out. Now, if you're real paranoid, you probably might want to cover this screen with a piece of fabric so you don't damage it. By the way, one thing you're going to notice about this keyboard is that it does include a 10 keypad on the 17 and 15 inch versions of the laptop. Phenomenal. Love that. Get all four of these, or all five of these screws out. And then finally this fifth one here. All right, so those screws are out. Now, to remove the keyboard, you actually want to push down towards the bottom of the, of the laptop. You can kind of grip it um, underneath here if you need to. You kind of lift up first. And then kind of push. There you go. And just kind of work it down. Okay, but don't pull, don't yank it away yet because there's going to be a cable right underneath it here, and you'll see that it's taped down here, and the disconnection point is actually on the motherboard below. So there's a little blue tab there. I want to just make sure I get my fingers on there pretty securely, and pull that up. Okay, work back back and forth slowly, and it'll come out. It's a ribbon connector. Okay, so be very careful not to bend that after you pull it out. Put this somewhere safe after you're done. I'm going to put just over here. All right, so where's that memory? It's right here. It's stacked differently than the, the secondary side. All right, so we're going to just work from the top. We're going to just kind of move the clasps, the clasps to the side. It's a hard word to say, clasps. And then pull it up at a 45-degree angle out. Oh, and... If you really are interested in saving this RAM and not messing up your, your new RAM, definitely ground yourself with an anti-static bracelet. We're using a, we're on a protected table here, it's floating. So, so you see that's memory module C and D, okay. So we're going to take our RAM, match up the notch, start install the bottom side first. 45 degree angle. Okay. Make sure it's nice and snug before I press down. I pull on the clasps. Do the same thing with this side. Come on. By the way, this is a brand new laptop, so it's pretty clean. You definitely want to use this opportunity to clean it out. Like this area here can get, can get very dirty on a laptop, especially if you use it a lot with the display open. Okay, so I'm push down now, pull down the clasps. Just kind of give it some extra push, and we're good to go. One huge difference between this and the 6500 is that there's no uh, tongue and groove uh, standoff screw here in the middle that you have to be careful about when you're uh, uh, putting the keyboard back in. All right, so let's put it back together. It's kind of a reversal of that process. We're going to kind of get this in this position like that and put the ribbon connect uh, connector back in. I would avoid using any metal like tweezers to uh, to get that in position. There you go. Look pretty flush. Nice. Cool. So make sure there's nothing under the keyboard. 
Are they sticking up? You want to wedge it here against this back corner. You want to get the little tabs underneath the uh, support. And make sure that, that it hooks on the side here. There's kind of these little indentions here. Where the keyboard can go underneath this frame. So it's hugging, hugging there, it's hugging there. You see how it's kind of puffy here in the middle? Okay, make sure that there's nothing underneath there. See this little cable here? It's going to kind of push it down a little bit to keep it from uh, interfering. Make sure that this cable has enough room. We'll put it back in. So we're going to put those five screws back in. Again, don't do these too tight. I'm going to kind of go back through and make sure they're snug, but not over tightened. Right. So I'm making sure the keyboard doesn't seem puffy or, you know, just to verify nothing gets stuck underneath it. It looks pretty good. I'm going to put our bezel back on. Um, my technique is to put the bottom on this bottom part first, just kind of get it in the rough position, and then kind of roll it towards the top of the laptop. It seems to work best. It's kind of a consistent Dell design philosophy. Make sure all those are in there. Beautiful design, it works really well. Looks great. So now we're going to close it, put our excess memory away. Put the battery back in. Kind of boot it up. Of course, we haven't created our RAID yet, but we want to just verify that the, there are no memory errors with the new laptop. Perfect. So you'll get this warning here. It says the amount of me uh, since memory has changed. In this case, if you've already uh, have your Windows installation in place, you can hit F1 and it will go ahead and boot up into Windows. So, in conclusion, we just performed a solid state upgrade and a RAM upgrade to the 6600. Hopefully you found this interesting. We're going to do next, next episode, we'll go ahead and show you how to create a RAID 0 array on your upgraded hard drives. And if you have any questions, please email us at support at mysolidbox.com. Thanks.